draw it quite differently. Here is a drawing of Mars made by an American astronomer. A drawing of Mars made by an American astronomer of the turn of the century named Percival Lowell. Here is Sirtis Major, the same region I showed you photographed before. But what is striking in this picture is all these funny straight lines. It looks like a cobweb all over the disk, straight lines. They were called canals. And Lowell truly believed that they were canals. Here is a region near Solus Lacus. And we see that the whole Solus Lacus region is radiating with canals going in all sorts of directions. Again, the canals, the most striking aspect of, uh, of the Lowell view of the planet. Now, what did Lowell believe these canals meant? Lowell believed the canals were canals. Reasonable enough idea. Lowell said that the straight lines were, could not possibly be the product of geology or meteorology. They had to be the product of biology. There were too many of them. They were too regular. They were too straight. They had to be produced by a race of intelligent beings that inhabited Mars. Lowell's idea was that Mars being a small planet with a low gravity, water had escaped from the planet in large quantities and now was a parched and desiccated world. The intelligent inhabitants made a big effort, according to Lowell, to conserve what water there was and so made a planet-girdling network of canals which captured the runoff in the spring from the polar caps and funneled them to the thirsty inhabitants of the equatorial cities of Mars. And uh, as a result, we have a view of Mars, which uh, we've made a little model of right here. And uh, here we see slightly out of focus the blue water and the green verdure along the banks. And as we scan down the banks of the canal, we come to a joining with another canal in a place which Lowell liked to call an oasis. And there at the oasis, we see some something. Old Christmas ornaments, I believe Mr. Coates has told me they are. But they here represent an exotic Martian city. And people around the turn of the century seriously believed, and it's not an impossible idea, it's not ridiculous, but they seriously believed that there were high civilizations on Mars. Now, to give you an idea of Lowell's own views on the subject, he talked from this place in the year 1900-something. 1910, about the canals. And here is what he said on a Friday evening at the Royal Institution in 1910. He said, to begin with, you should know that the lines you will see, that's the canals, are certainties, not matters admitting of the slightest question for all their strange regularity. And so seen by all those who, from the most prolonged and careful study, are qualified to speak. He says, uh, others have described them as laid down with rule and compass. And not only I, says Lowell, but all of my assistants who worked for him have seen them thousands of times the same. Nor are they near the limit of vision in our air, in Lowell's special observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, in America, which sometimes sets the planet against the sky as if etched in a steel engraving. Then he says, the technical word canals does not mean canals that are dug, but artificially fertilized strips of country connected with and vivified by the turning to such account of the melting of the polar cap. Lastly, I may say that by saying that organic life exists there, we do not mean human beings. Well, Mr. Lowell was very certain. The trouble is that lots of other astronomers tried to find the canals, and very few of them could, using 
equally good telescopes from equally good places. And so there got to be a lot of skepticism about the canals. Yet some astronomers saw them. What could they be due to? Well, let's do a little, very simple experiment. I have here some irregular pieces of uh, polystyrene, this uh, lightweight material, and here a uh, uh, felt black backdrop. And I'm going to try to just spill these on the backdrop in as random a way as I can. And since they fall through the air, that helps to randomize the patterns. Okay. Now, I would like to ask you to uh, look at this and tell me if you think you see some straight lines or small segments of straight lines. Is there anybody in the audience who sees little straight lines in this? Could you raise your hand, those of you who, who do? Lots of people see, no, not straight lines everywhere, but some straight lines. Um, may I ask you to show me the straight line? It will be very painless. Come on, come on down. Show me what straight lines you see. There's one there, good. One there, one there, there, good. So now, how many pieces of, of polystyrene does each of your lines have? Well, depends. Roughly, how many? Ru about six. Six, something like that. Good. Thank you very much. You've been a big help in deciding on what the canals of Mars may be about. Appreciate your help. Um, now, what is the lesson from this? It's that if you have an irregular pattern of fine detail, the eye, which enjoys order, sees apparent patterns where the little dots seem to connect up in a straight line. There's no way of making such an array of dots without occasionally seeing a straight line. So many observers thought that was the explanation of the canals. And we can here see a description of uh, just such a point. Here is a region of Mars, which you can see has lots of lovely canals. And, Nick, and we're going to dissolve this region into another description. Here is a drawing. What a beautiful dissolve that was. A drawing of just the same region as seen by Antoniotti. And Notice he sees virtually no straight lines, just disconnected fine detail. And now if we can dissolve back and forth, we can see how the eye might have drawn in those moments of temporary good seeing a straight line where there was only disconnected fine detail. But the problem is much worse than this, because we have now examined Mars closely with spacecraft, with much finer detail than Lowell could possibly have obtained. And we can look at all the regions where he drew canals. And here is a map which we drew at Cornell University of most of Lowell's canals against the features which are truly on Mars. And with one or two exceptions, there's no connection whatever. It isn't that little dots were strung up accidentally by Lowell and his followers. It's not that simple at all. There is nothing in most of the places where Lowell drew canals. And therefore, we must conclude that the canals of Mars are an indication of the inaccuracy of the human hand-eye-brain combination. We are not perfect observers. This is, by the way, a comment relevant to reports of unidentified flying objects as well. We do not report things always accurately, no matter how hard we try. And particularly when our emotions are involved, when we'd love to have a certain answer, our results are not of the highest accuracy. Now, there were two other kinds of arguments which Lowell used for life on Mars. One had to do with color, and the other had to do with seasonal changes. Now, Lowell and many other visual observers reported 
that the dark areas of Mars were green.